In this video, we're gonna go over how to get the AM5 set up so we can get you up and running. Now, whether you already have one or you're looking, hopefully this video will help you out with exactly what you need to capture some great images. The first thing you're obviously gonna need is the tripod. So we can go ahead and get the legs extended and just extend them all the way out for now. Uh, this tripod is very short, so we can just go ahead and extend them all the way just for the setup. And if you really need to with your tripod and you're gonna be setting up in grass, you can unscrew the bottom of the tripod here and then screw in these spikes to help keep things stable. And after we have it set down on the ground, the next thing we wanna do is take the spreader screw out because we're gonna need to remove the plate from the middle of the top of the tripod. All right, and once we have this out, we'll just leave it as it is and just set it aside. After the spreader screws are out of the plate of the tripod, we go ahead and unlock the lock here that holds the plate into place and go ahead and just remove it because we're gonna attach it directly to the bottom of the AM5. Now, when you pull the AM5 out of the case, there are three screws on the bottom of it. That is for that plate for the tripod. So, what you're gonna wanna do is use the larger hex wrench that is in the case to get those screws unscrewed. All right, and now what I like to do to make this just a little bit easier to line up is I put one screw in one of the holes and just line it up directly with the hole on the bottom of the AM5 and just screw it in just a little bit. And then go ahead and grab another screw and do the same thing. Once you have two in, all three will be lined up. From there, go ahead and just tighten everything up. Now you don't have to go crazy tightening it up. You know, make sure you can still get it off later if you need to, but you know, make sure it's pretty secure. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the AM5 on the tripod. Now one sad thing about the tripod, unlike others, say the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro, the tripod doesn't have any marking on it to point you towards your respective pole. Now you can mark one of the legs and just say, this is the one that points towards my pole, or you can use the lock, whatever method works for you, but just remember that there is no way to mark your respective pole and which way to point it. All we have to do is just set it down in there and then go ahead and turn the lock until it's locked into place. Okay, after you have the AM5 on there and that lock locked, we have to put the spreader back on. So we'll go ahead and get that done. So you just go underneath here, I like to use the longer end of the uh, spreader screw because that will actually go up into the bottom plate of the AM5 and actually into the AM5 itself. Get that screwed in. And then once it gets a little ways in there, go ahead and actually put the bottom knob on so that way nothing falls off. Make sure that it's screwed into the bottom of the AM5 first, then push the little spreader plate up to contact the tripod legs, and then just tighten it down. And the last thing here, I don't know exactly what Zewo calls it, but I'm gonna call it a net. If you wanna put that on, now's the time to do it as well. And you'll have to put it underneath the foam grips for the tripod, actually kind of down by the adjustment uh, locks for the legs and that'll spread it out all the way so you can put whatever you need in there, say a battery source or something else. It doesn't matter, but if you're gonna use it, now's the time to attach it. And then you can go back around real quick and make sure everything's nice and tight. All right, now that we have this secured, the next thing we need to do real quick before doing anything else is get this thing balanced. So look at the two balance bubbles there that are on the mount and make sure that things are good to go. Now, because I'm indoors and I'm doing this on a cloudy night, I don't really need to do that. The floor here is pretty level, but if you need to level it out, you can just adjust the legs to get it to where it's pretty level. Now, I would use both bubbles just to make sure that both are centered. And if both are centered, then you are definitely level. After you have it level, go ahead and unlock the mounting knobs for your respective dovetail plate. Whether you have Losmandy or Vixen, it doesn't matter. Now I keep my telescope all put together for ease of setup and I store it in my case that way with the exception of the guide scope and the ASI Air. 
those are pulled off and stored separately. And in a future video, I'm updating my storage system just a little bit because of the autofocuser and I'll show you what I did. But we just go ahead and slide this into place. And what I like to do is you don't actually need to keep this centered and balanced like you do with the EQ mount. But what I like to do is where I know that focus generally is, that kind of puts the focus knob at center for at least this telescope. So I put that kind of in the middle of the mounting plate and that gives it a little bit of balance. Now it doesn't really matter if it's one way or the other because of the way the harmonic drive works, it doesn't care about balance. But you can still do a few things just to help the gear out. Did you know I have a Discord server, which is a chat application that we can use outside of YouTube, so we're not always relying on comments in the community tab. Now in this Discord, I have channels set up for things like posting your images that you may have taken, posting what gear you have, asking questions, and general off-topic stuff as well. So if you are interested, the link is down in the description. Go ahead and come on in. We already have a little bit of discussion going on, but I'd love to see more of you in there. All right, now that we have this all put together here, we can go ahead and just start plugging things in. So everybody has a method that works for them. I typically try to do the same thing every time. That way, if I'm ever setting up in the dark, I don't have to worry that I'm gonna miss anything. So what I usually do is start with the guide scope. So I go ahead and get the guide scope itself plugged in and then plugged into the USB 2 port of the ASI Air. And then go ahead and do the same thing with the main camera. And for the main camera, that goes into a USB 3 slot. Now remember, USB 2 is black, USB 3 is blue. While we are dealing with the main camera, we'll go ahead and get the power cable plugged into it, if you're using a Zewo camera, and get that plugged into the ASI Air. All right, so the next thing to do is plug the mount into the ASI Air. Now, I have talked up and down about using a Skywatcher mount with an EQ mod cable. And let me tell you what, for Skywatcher, that works, however, for the AM5, we don't even have to worry about it. This can be used on a secondary setup if you keep a Skywatcher mount. All right, so for the AM5, they actually provide a USB cable for it. You would just plug it in this port and then take it up to the USB 2 spot on the ASI Air. And now your mount is plugged in and completely able to be guided by the guide camera and keep things nice and sharp. On the last USB slot here, if you're using an ASI Air Pro, you're going to need to use a thumb drive. So that would go in the last USB 3 slot. If you're using a ASI Air Plus, you can use a thumb drive and I highly recommend that you still do, or you can just rely on the internal storage. And for the ASI Air Mini, same thing only on the ASA Air Mini, everything is USB 2.0, so it doesn't matter what slot you plug it into. And also for ASA Air Pro and ASA Air Plus users, if you're gonna do, say, a Wi-Fi setup with a router or anything, that's when you go ahead and get that plugged in. If you need help getting your ASA Air set up on Wi-Fi, I'm gonna go ahead and link it up above on whichever side it goes on. And you can follow that guide to get your ASA Air on the Wi-Fi but now would be the time. The next thing we are gonna do is go ahead and get the power plugged into the ASI Air. Now, I keep mine mounted on top of the telescope just for the balance for when I'm using it on the HGQ5, so I'm not really gonna change that here for the AM5. If I get a different scope, then maybe I'll do that. For now, all you have to do is plug one end in right by where you can mount the ASI Air, and if it's mounted there, then you might have to use a couple cable ties or something to keep it short. And then you just go ahead and plug the other end into the ASI Air. And then while we're here, since we're on this end of the ASI Air, we can go ahead and just turn that on. So that way when we turn the whole system on, everything comes on. We have two plugs left, depending on whether or not you want to use one of them. But in order to power the mount, you go ahead and put your power source in here. Now keep in mind, it has to be a 12 volt power source. So you might need a converter. The one I use, I have linked down in the description, or 
you can use something like a, a Jackery battery and just go straight off the 12 volt from there. Now the optional last cable I was talking about is whether or not you want to use the hand controller. So if you want to use the hand controller just to make tweaks on your own, then you can, and this is where you plug it in, in this spot right here. And then you just plug the other end into the hand controller. Okay, so real quick for non-ASI Air users, if you're gonna use this mount, instead of doing the steps I just did, there are a few different tweaks. So the USB cable that plugs directly into the mount itself, that would head straight back to your laptop or desktop. Let's say you're using Nina for this. And for your guide cam, you would need to plug your ST4 cable into this spot right here and also your guide cam. So for non-ASI Air users, you can set this up instead of needing like an EQ Mod cable or a special cable. Just using the USB cable that comes with it should be enough for your laptop or desktop to take control. Okay, now that everything is plugged in, let's go ahead and get it turned on. And we hear that nice little beep saying that things are coming online. And we'll hear the ASI Air do its beep here in a second. And while we do that, I will go ahead and grab my tablet. Now, before we continue into the app, I do have a question for you. What feature would you like to get added to the next iteration of this mount, which would technically be the AM6? Now for me, it's related to the Wi-Fi. Now this is Wi-Fi capable, but the unfortunate part is that it is tied to the hand controller. And if you don't have the hand controller plugged in, you have to be plugged in by USB to whatever device is controlling it. Now I think adding Wi-Fi capabilities directly to the mount would bypass some of the problems that the ASI Air has because of the Raspberry Pi structure. And and the AM5 can also put out a stronger signal that goes a little bit farther. And on top of that, I think adding an ethernet port would be a good idea just in case somebody wants to add a range extender because they're just setting up a little bit too far out of range of their home Wi-Fi. But either way, what feature would you like to add, whether it's on the software side or the hardware side? Let me know down in the comments below. Now that everything's turned on and we're loading into the ASI Air app, if you have some dew straps, now would be a good time to go ahead and put them on because the camera is going to start cooling itself down if you have auto cooling turned on on power on okay now that we are in the app we can see that uh, everything kind of looks like it was the last time I had things set up so we'll just go ahead and change the mount and Z will put the AM5 right at the top so that makes that easy to find and because I got the 2600 I'm going to go ahead and select that now, I don't have the EAF attached yet, but I will eventually. And we go ahead and hit enter. Now, what we would do is the same process that I put in my how to set up the ASI Air Plus guide. We go ahead and get polar aligned, we get focused, and then to double check your polar alignment again. Now, the thing about polar aligning with this is that there is no polar scope. So, what I recommended about the tripod, make sure you point it as close to your pole as possible. And then you would just go ahead into the PA menu and then go ahead and hit play. Now, because I'm inside, I'm not actually going to be able to pull the line, but the way to make adjustments is you go to the wedge itself and you wanna adjust the altitude and azimuth bolts. Now, the thing about it here is for your bolts, for the azimuth bolts, these are the ones on the side at the bottom here. If they are in, they are unlocked. If they are out, they are locked. And the one thing I like to do before getting started at all is make sure that I unlock them and adjust the knobs to get this as centered as possible in this little slot here that the locks can go through. You can only go so far either direction before you hit an edge. So if you center it before getting started, it might make things a little bit easier. But the way to make your adjustments for polar aligning is you unlock your azimuth bolts and then these two knobs here, you can either go left or right. So it doesn't matter which one you do, you just have to play around with it. Eventually you'll get the hang of which way does which. And if you're turning the one in your right hand, clockwise it'll move the mount counterclockwise and the opposite is the same for turning the knob in your right hand if you're holding it like i am the telescope is pointed that way and turning that one counterclockwise makes the mount 
turn clockwise. Whatever method you have to use to remember which knob makes things go which way is up to you. But you would unlock th those knobs to make it move left and right, which is your azimuth. Let's just say you're a little bit too high or too low when polar alignment runs for the first time and you have to adjust that. So the next thing here is to unlock the side levers that adjust your altitude. And you can see here on the side that they give a little indicator on which direction to turn the lever to lock it. And from there, you go ahead and adjust the altitude bolt to whatever you need. Now I live somewhere around 40 degrees, but one big bummer about this that I kind of, I have to give a little feedback here. Kind of wish that they would have made like a little pointer or something to make it more accurate, but getting it close to whatever your latitude is will at least get it close enough that polar alignment can actually be ran and you can get polar aligned. So you just go ahead and make your adjustments. And once you have your adjustments made and your polar alignment is good, so just like an equatorial mount, you have to adjust the altitude and the azimuth, like I said in the ASAR Plus setup video, go ahead and get focused. Now, once you're focused, do one more polar alignment. That way the stars are sharp and it's properly picking up the stars. That way your polar alignment will be good and your guiding will also be good. From there, you go ahead and shoot whatever object it is you wanted to shoot. If you need to know how to do the polar alignment or you need to know how to do the focusing, go ahead and check out the how to set up the ASIR Plus video and you'll wanna start it towards the middle where we actually are running the ASI air and getting things running. Now, one thing that's kinda of cool is with the hand controller, let's just say you're a little bit off of your target and the touch screen on your device for the ASI air isn't quite working or you're not using an ASI air and you're using a program that doesn't have a center here option, you can go ahead and just play around with this. And just like a thumbstick for a controller, you can do multiple directions at a time. Pretty nifty, huh? Now one nice thing is that say you were playing around with it with the hand controller, or you got done with whatever you were shooting and you need to use the hand controller to take it back home. On the bottom of the controller is a little button that looks like a little rewind button. Just hold it down until it beeps and then it'll go right back home. And the AM5 always knows where the home position is, so you don't have to worry that it's gonna be a little bit off every now and then. It'll always go back to home correctly. Back in the app, some cool things that are here for the AM5 is we can see that the icon for your mount looks exactly like the AM5, so you know which one that is. And you can change this the uh, sound mode. So, the beep. And you can turn on which type of tracking you wanna do. So whether you're doing normal side reel or say next year, if you're in North America, you're gonna be shooting the eclipse in April. This is where you'd make your choice based on which type of shot you wanna do, whether you do solar or lunar, or if you're just doing a regular solar shot another time of the year or a regular lunar shot. This is where you can change the speed of the tracking. But you don't have to have that on. If you have an auto guider, it'll properly hold hold the star if you're doing a deep sky object. Beyond that, if you're not using the hand controller, you can also make it go home in the app from there. Either way, this is how you get this set up and running, and I still haven't gotten a chance to use it yet. We will here in a couple days, but I've been playing around with setting it up so I can show you guys how to do it in case you were planning on getting one. Let's hope the forecasts that are showing up stay exactly how they are so I can get this thing out to play. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.